Welcome to Pikeville History Moments, where we talk about the history and heritage of Pikeville, Kentucky, and the surrounding area. Today, we're talking about John Paul Riddle, an aviation pioneer and a son of Pike County. Stick around to the end to learn how a boy from Shelby Creek became a knight of the British Empire. John Paul Riddle's life was filled with events, accomplishments, and brushes with history and fame. There were far too many events in his life to cover in this short feature, so this will serve as an introduction to his incredible life. In the future, we'll cover a variety of these events in detail. Riddle was born in 1901. His parents, Tandy and Bessie Riddle, were both teachers and his mother died when he was two. His maternal grandmother helped raise Riddle and his sister, Bessie, on Shelby Creek. From a very young age, Riddle dreamed of flying. He even planted feathers, hoping he could grow birds to study them up close. When he saw his first airplane as a teen, he knew he wanted to be a pilot. He graduated from the Pikeville Collegiate Academy in 1920 and accepted an appointment to the United States Naval Academy. After a few months, he left Annapolis and enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Corps where he could train as a pilot. While he waited for a spot to open, he trained as an aircraft mechanic and finally took his first airplane ride at 21. He returned to Pikeville in 1922 as a lieutenant with wings, but jobs in aviation were scarce. To make ends meet, he gave flying lessons out of a field where the Bowles Edition now stands. He became one of the pioneers in the barnstorming craze that swept the country. Barnstormers would fly over small towns to get the attention and gather a crowd. Then they would perform stunts and tricks before selling rides. A typical rate was about $5 for a 15 minute ride. Riddle performed one of his most memorable stunts on the 4th of July in 1923. He flew his Jenny plane under the middle bridge in Pikeville as most of the town watched. He soon moved to Cincinnati and continued barnstorming out of the nearby fields, often operating as Riddle's Flying Circus. Around this time, he came to give a ride to T. Higby Embry, a young, wealthy Cincinnati area native with a keen interest in flying and a mind for business. They soon developed a friendship and then a partnership. Exactly 22 years after the Wright brothers flew at Kitty Hawk, the Embry-Riddle Company was formed on December 17, 1925. The following year, they formed the Embry-Riddle Flying School and began training pilots. They helped finance the company and the school with weekly air circuses. In 1927, the Embry-Riddle Company was awarded one of the first government contracts to deliver air mail. In the early 1930s, Embry-Riddle Company merged with the company that would become American Airlines. Riddle worked for that company and eventually moved to Miami, where he started other aviation businesses. Embry moved to California and retired from aviation. He died soon after World War II. With a new partner, John McKay, he was awarded government contracts to train civilian pilots. The Land Lease Act opened the door for the U.S. to train Royal Air Force pilots. Riddle was asked to establish flying schools in Florida and Tennessee. 
Through these schools, U.S. instructors train more than 26,000 pilots, mechanics, and personnel critical to air warfare in World War II. During the war, Riddle also established a training school in Brazil at the urging of President Franklin Roosevelt. This was reportedly decided during a meeting at the White House between the President, Riddle, and General Hap Arnold. Arnold was a longtime friend of Riddle's and would become known as the father of the Air Force. With the war winding down, Riddle's partner at Embry-Riddle began to focus on transitioning to a peacetime business model. Riddle made what he said at the time was his most difficult decision by selling out of Embry-Riddle to keep the Brazilian school going. He later said the decision was a mistake, but that he felt like he had to honor his promise to President Roosevelt. After the war, Riddle continued to be an aviation entrepreneur, but in the 1950s, heart attacks grounded him. When Embry-Riddle became a university, he joined the Board of Trustees. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University became a global leader in aviation education and research. Today, civilian and military pilots and astronauts are all Embry-Riddle Eagles. Embry-Riddle's campuses in Daytona Beach, Florida, Prescott, Arizona, and Embry-Riddle Worldwide educate more than 34,000 students each year. The university also operates in Brazil and Singapore. Riddle visited Embry-Riddle often, staying in residence halls and playing tennis with students a quarter of his age. He shared stories of the early birds and pioneers he knew, including Orville Wright, Jimmy Doolittle, Charles Lindbergh, Amelia Earhart, Howard Hughes, and General Hap Arnold. John Paul Riddle received many industry honors, including introduction into the Aviation Halls of Fame in both Kentucky and Florida. The recognition that meant a great deal to him was his honorary Doctorate of Law degree from Pikeville College in 1987. When Riddle died in Florida in 1989, an Embry-Riddle student flying one of the university's planes, scattered his ashes over Biscayne Bay near his home. Riddle's name is spoken by pilots every day, repeated hundreds of times as the call sign for Embry-Riddle student pilots in Daytona Beach. Daytona Beach clearance, Riddle 182, North Practice Area, VFR 3000, with information Sierra. Riddle 182, Daytona class, maintain VFR at below 3000, departure frequency 125.35, squawk 0120. How does a boy who grew up in Pikeville, descended from both the Hatfields and the McCoys, become a knight? He was the hero behind many other war heroes. John Paul Riddle was honored as a member of the British Empire in 1945 for his contributions to the Allied victory. A commemorative marker stands in the British plot at Oak Ridge Cemetery in Arcadia, Florida the resting place of 23 Royal Air Force pilots who died in training. Thank you for watching Pikeville History Moments. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, or click on the link to our website at visitpikeville.com. If you're in Pikeville, take a walk to Pike Street to see John Paul Riddle's historical marker at the side of the old middle bridge.
or go by the Big Sandy Heritage Center Museum and see the other history there on display. <music>